Hi, this is Nam. Uh, this is Kathy. And welcome to another walkthrough of one of Kathy's paintings. And what are we doing today, Kathy? Uh, I guess we're doing a walkthrough of a commission I did a little while ago of a 16 by 20 inch lion, which is... Uh, this commission was loosely inspired by the lion emoji. I'm sure everyone knows what the lion emoji looks like. When I say loosely, it's a lot more intricate than the two-dimensional, two-colored uh, lion emoji. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the client and how you guys uh, conceived this um, piece together? Well, you know the backstory, but I guess I'll just say it for the sake of uh, broadcasting. So it's one of your best friends um, has asked me to commission a lion uh, inspired by his favorite emoji, the lion emoji. Uh, when I took, uh, when I got the concept, I thought, well, I'm not gonna just draw the lion emoji because it's a lot more cartoonish than my usual style so I know I was gonna, going to add my own spin and my own watercolor style to it and I uh, also know that uh, it's going to front face to be front facing so it's going to be a head focused lion portrait but I want it to be a lot more expressive um, than an emoji obviously so that's that's kind of how we got started um, but you know, he gave me a lot of autonomy to um, take it however I want. Looking at the whiskers, did you use some sort of uh, wax right there? Yeah, so before I started painting, I did a pencil sketch. It's not in the vi in video here. And then I used a masking fluid, which just kind of blocks out um, areas that I don't want paint on. So I use a really thin brush to apply the masking fluid where the whiskers are and I start painting layers over it. This took quite a few layers um, just because I want the lion to kind of, I want to dimensionalize the mane on the lion um, with different colors and shading. I use different shades of gray, browns, and you can see that I also use a hint of blue on, in his mane on top of his head as well as on his nose and that's a signature move that I have in a lot of my paintings. It's interesting because some people would make the whiskers black but here you made it white. Yeah I guess I think black whisker will be too stark of a contrast in this case against the softer tone of his mane. Most of my paintings are on the lighter side and I think in the past, I've done a piece where I did use this, uh, use black to paint whiskers of another animal, and it just came out too strong. So I wanted to try white. And worst case, if I didn't like white, I can always paint it black. And then, is there a certain brand of uh, masking fluid that you use? I don't remember. I just buy the one that's available in the Blick art store. Um, I haven't really done much research on what's a what's a good masking blue and what's not it just I bought the first one that I found and it works and I wasn't going to question it um, is this one of the first times that you've actually just done a portrait of an animal definitely not uh, not for a commission especially I've done quite a few animal commissions this one is one of the bigger ones I've done um, my commission range from eight by 10 inch all the way up to 20 by 30 inch so this is on the bigger side and I found that I really enjoy painting bigger because it allows me to be a lot more loose and expressive which is the natural style and the tendency that I, that I paint uh, and I don't tend to paint this big when I'm creating my own work or uh, creating my own illustrations and collections for print sales so this was a nice uh, project. Are you already starting to make the scar on the right eye right there? Yeah, I think we missed that about three minutes ago. So on the right, there's a scar um, where the lion's eye is. And that was a suggestion I made to, to the client um, because he wanted to hide the number one in the lion somewhere. And I thought instead of just hiding a one, 
the number one, um, why not conceptualize it into a scar? Um, I know it's not as obvious as a number, but I think it's more of an idea that, um, uh, I think it's more of a, a symbolic representation of the number. With this unique color palette, did you visualize it in your head first or did you um, make some sort of swatches on the side before you started approaching the piece or you just um, kind of built, built upon the layers as you went along? I did use a swatch for this. So, so I did a bit of planning with this piece. And in some of my other pieces, I kind of just intuitively evolved the color palette as I go. But for this one, I actually did a draft before this in a smaller size and it turned out not so visually pleasing. It had too much blue tone in it. So I wanted to tone down the blue, but also still include some blue. So I did a color swatch, I think on top of the paper that's not shown in the video. And you can see in the palette, the mixing palette on the right, those are the colors that I initially played with. So it's a reddish brown to light brown, a gray. Light gray is my favorite color. I use them every single time. Um, the sepia, so it's like a light grayish black color as well as the uh, cerulean blue. So what are you doing right there? Oh, I'm you're now erasing. erasing the masking fluid. Okay. Yeah. And then so, it, does it have to be like dry to do that? Yeah, I had to wait for masking fluid to dry, but it dries pretty quickly. <clears throat> it dries pretty quickly, especially for thinner lines. Um, and since I've already... I've already painted over it. I knew that it was uh, completely dry, but sometimes I don't wait for it to completely dry before I paint over it just because I'm impatient, but most of the time it works out. So like random question, I know I'm prone to random questions, but do you ever, how do you prevent from smearing while you're painting? Cause you're right-handed and you're wearing a sweater. So does it ever smear when you're going across the painting? Um, you probably can't see from this angle, but if I'm going, say I've painted something on my right and I'm trying to reach over to my left, I actually, my arm is hovering over the paper and I just naturally know not to touch it. And what's good with watercolor is if I do smear, it doesn't look like smearing because all the brush strokes are so light that I can easily uh, either lift the color with some more water and the paintbrush or I can dab it off with uh, toilet. No. I can dab it off with paper towel. Or toilet paper. You can say toilet paper. It's okay. I do not use <laughs> toilet paper. <laughs> I use paper towels to dab it off. So, um, yeah, there are no such thing as mistakes or accidents, in my opinion, when it comes to watercolor, unless, you know, I take a really bold stroke of color and just smear it across the the canvas or something. You just put in the, the little whisker freckles. Um, did you have fun doing that? You mean pores? Yeah, the pores. <laughs> whisker freckles? Yeah. That's almost better than toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are fun. I think I had some pencil marks underneath. It's funny. It's like, I don't know what you did, but the, the line definitely looks aged. Like, he is wise and he's been through some stuff. <laughs> Yeah, with or without the scar, right? He just looks like, he looks wise and kind. Yeah. Which not all lions are. I think this is maybe your third lion that you've done. I don't think you've done that many. Correct. It's my third or fourth. And each one is really different from the next. Were you able to scan this one in or was it a little bit too big to scan? I think I scanned parts of it so I had to break it into quarters. Okay. Um, but I haven't scanned them together. I haven't stitched them together because it's a commission. I mean, I don't plan on selling it as a print, um, but I'm glad that the client liked it and he actually purchased it framed. So it arrived at his door professionally framed by Framebridge. Uh, it's an online service I'm pretty happy with. I'm not an affiliate, just like their service. <laughs> <laughs> and then as far as like, physical exertion do you get more tired doing bigger pieces versus smaller pieces or is it all the same i think for the most part it's actually all the same 
honestly, I just don't want to waste paper when I'm painting on my own. And a lot of times I need to scan in the painting, so I needed to make them smaller since I don't often think about selling the original. But when it comes to bigger commissions, I, I think the level of effort is almost the same because you still have to draw the entire, you know, you have to plan out the composition and the concept and colors. And yes, I am making larger paint strokes and I am drawing larger shapes, but the general process is the same and I don't think it takes a whole lot more um, to do that, which is actually a good question because it made me think about pricing my commissions and how some of the smaller pieces take me just as long as the bigger ones, especially when the bigger ones involve multiple subjects. Um, it's something that I'm still refining, but that's also a whole other topic with, with regards to commissions and my the growth of my business and how I want to approach it going forward. But yeah, I digress. And I think you're finishing up. You use some sort of fan brush, and now you're doing your um, you're doing your splatters, right? Yes, I use a fan brush to flicker um, paint off because it tends to create smaller splatter. And then I use the bigger round brush to create some of the bigger boulder, right, like right there, the bigger boulder splashes. And um, since we're finishing up, did the client like the painting? He loves it. <laughs> I'm glad. And um, this was for Hong, so shout out to Hong. But um, thank you very much for joining us for this episode. Um, not sure which one we'll do next, but... Um, Thank you for continuing to support Kathy's art. Thank you for your support and thanks for watching all the way till the end.